Hey guys, what's going on? Adam Snyder here with The Homemade Entrepreneur. Today I want to tell you the top 10 home-based businesses that you can do online. Every one of these is fairly easy to start, doesn't take a whole lot of time, and you can make a full-time income with part-time hours. So number one is an eBay seller. eBay sellers do not have to work very hard. They have to find the right products. Some of this is experience, some of this is just luck. Um, you can find your thrift store items you can find your eBay items at thrift stores. Um, let's say you buy it for $1.99 or $2.99. You can easily sell things like shirts, used electronics, books, toys, uh, really anything on eBay. And you can make good money. Let's say you sell it for $18.99, you know, $24.99. You're going to make a good amount of profit. You can also use Craigslist to find these deals. I also like to use yard sales. Yard sales are a great way to find items because sometimes they're a gold mine. Sometimes you can find items that people have no clue what they are. You pick them up. Let's say for a dollar, two dollars on a, at a yard sale. You can sometimes sell them for a hundred, two hundred dollars uh, on eBay. So just keep that in mind. Clothing and electronics are huge sellers, so always look for those. Um, and find quality wholesale suppliers. I recommend this because if you can find a wholesale supplier to buy a lot of your inventory from, then you don't have to go out and source every single day. You just order a large quantity and you list it on eBay. That's pretty much all you do. Another great way is to bundle. You can bundle books. Let's say you have the Twilight series. Bundle that together, sell on eBay. You can bundle, you know, different toys together even clothing or you know you can be as you know different as you want you could do you know whatever you just come up with a certain uh, item that you want to bundle put it together and start making money number two an amazon seller so you can sell on amazon as a merchant or you can do fba which is fulfilled by amazon fulfilled by amazon or fba is where you send all your inventory to their warehouse i like doing fba because it keeps uh, my office clean and it keeps money coming in i don't have to do much of the work i like to sell products that i can easily replenish so that would be toys home goods food and clothing i really like food and toys um, food everyone uses on a daily basis toys people love them they're great for christmas gifts birthday presents um, you know graduations whatever everyone is always buying toys so that's one of the things I like to use, I like to sell, and home goods and clothing, that I just kind of top it off. So uh, really, choose your category and just start selling. Just like with eBay, buy wholesale to increase your sales volume. Wholesale, usually you don't make as much as far as your return on investment, but you can sell more. You can buy more, which means you can sell more so you can make you know a little bit more money. Another way is to create a product, such as a private label product. Um, you can get a lot of these from overseas, from China, or sometimes you can actually find a manufacturer to create your product right here in the United States. Another thing is to promote your listings, promote listings that you own. So there's no other sellers on that listing. By doing this, you can pay you know, as little as a penny to have you know your your listing advertised on Amazon. It's a great way to increase your income, and it's a great way to get your items sold. Something that I like to do is bundle products to increase my income. I like to bundle toys and I like to bundle um, home goods. And the reason I like to do both of those is because you can easily find items that go good together. So, f for instance, toys, you can bundle all the Power Rangers, every single color, and sell them as a set. One thing I do recommend is that you avoid restricted categories and brands unless you're approved. So some restricted categories would be, you know, health and personal care, beauty and grocery. Some restricted brands are Logitech. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, Michael Kors right now is restricted, you know, or a restricted brand, but just know the restricted brands change all the time. So just keep that in mind and always be looking to see if you can sell the item or not. Another way to make money from home is to do freelance writing. Freelance writing is fairly simple to start. You can use sites like Odesk, Upwork, and TextBroker. <clears throat> All those sites, you can find a good amount of work. On Odesk and Upwork, you bid for the jobs. TextBroker, you pretty much just click on it and you can get it. TextBroker is based on the quality of writing that you submit in the very beginning. I like to find clients that pay well, at least two cents per word or, or above. And two cents per word is actually above average. Most people are charging 1.2 cents per word. So charge a little bit more, make more money. 
And also, I like to write on topics that I know well. It speeds up the turnaround time. For example, I would not want to write on, you know, how to cure cancer because I don't know how to do that. If I wanted to write on, you know, how to invest in real estate with no money down, I could do that in a very short amount of time because I know that. I know that topic very well. Also, write medium length articles. Don't waste your time writing 200 word articles and writing 50 of them. Instead, write 10, 800 word to 1500 word articles. That will give you better understanding of the topic. That will give you more words to actually, you know, express or convey your, um, you know, whatever your idea, um, you know, and just, you know, increase your network to increase your income. And that's, that's fairly simple. It's pretty much, it works with anything. You increase the amount of people you work for, you will increase your income. One other tip is to edit every article that you write. Don't send something in unedited. Chances are the person won't like it if there's a lot of mistakes and they will cut you off. And the last tip for freelance writing is don't outsource in the beginning. If you want to make good money, you can outsource the writing to somebody else, but make sure you know that they are a quality writer and that you know the person that you are writing for understands that you are gonna outsource some of it because some people don't like that. Another way to make money, merch by Amazon. This is actually a newer um, newer topic. Uh, I did one of these videos about four years ago. Merch by Amazon was not around at that time, so this is new. But merch by Amazon, you sell your t-shirt designs on merch by Amazon. The, the, the t-shirts are actually made by Amazon themselves. The designs printed on them, and they are sent off to the buyer. You get a percentage of the income of the, the sale. So... Let's say you know you sell it for fourteen ninety nine, maybe you get you know six dollars in some sense. It's just an example. I don't know the exact amount, but it varies based on what you sell it for. Create designs based on trending topics. I recommend this because you can get quicker sales. So let's say you did some you know caricature of Hillary Clinton, and you said something about a uh, you didn't add, you know quote her exactly, but you did some kind of you know funny thing about what she said, or you know Donald Trump, or you know whoever LeBron James. That would be a trending topic. I would not you know you know copy her face and put it exact. I would make it a little bit funnier because people like those things. And you know I'm gonna skip over this next thing, but never c copy a design or use a trademark material. I recommend that because you can be shut down almost automat automatically for using something that's trademarked. And also, in, if you increase your designs, you will increase your sales. It is estimated that roughly 3 to 5% sell per day. So if you have 100 designs, you will sell between 3 to 5 t-shirts per day. Now that is, that's not taking in consideration if your trending shirts are, you know, selling very quickly, but that's just the average 3 to 5 sales per day with 100 designs. One thing I like to do is mash popular topics, and I do this because you get a larger reach. Let's say I put LeBron and you know Steph Curry put their faces together, and just did something you know cool with that. That would actually increase my reach because I can use my low competition keywords, promote both of those on social media. You know, I'm talking about LeBron, I'm talking about Steph Curry. You know, and it, yeah, you can just see how that can keep you know growing and growing. The next thing, become a Kindle publisher. This is something that I've done for many years, and I like to do it because you can create ebooks that people want to read and want to share. The more times people share your books and read it, the more money you're going to make. I like to write ebooks that are at least 10,000 words because that gives you enough time to actually educate the reader on whatever the topic is. I mostly write in self help, and that is why I like to use more words. Something else that many people have done wrong is they don't create a professional looking cover. If you create a professional looking cover, you'll get more sales. People do not read the inside of the book first. They see the cover. So that is why you have to sell them on the cover so that they can buy the book. One thing I like to do is promote my ebook on social media. Social media is a huge platform. You have Instagram, you have YouTube, you have Facebook. Make sure you promote your your ebook on all those platforms, even Twitter. Also promote ebook on a website. Use an email list. Those are great ways to get the initial surge of sales. 
and repeat the process by creating multiple ebooks within the same niche. This is something that a lot of people don't do correctly. They like to go with the shotgun approach where they write one book, let's say on real estate, another book on pet training, another book on, you know, uh, you know, yard maintenance, and maybe another book on, you know, uh, how to cook a pot roast correctly. You need to stay within the same niche to increase your sales faster. And also link to your other ebooks at the end of each book. By doing this, you can increase your sales. Become a YouTube creator. This is something that is fairly easy. I'm actually doing a YouTube video right now, as you probably noticed. You get a percentage or a very you know small amount of money based on every thousand views you get. It's not a whole lot of money, but over time it will add up. So create high quality videos around a certain topic and choose a topic that's based on something in your life. I like to do this because it's easier to film. You know, I'm usually sitting at the computer, so I can do a whole lot of stuff with computers. I'm always working from home, so I teach people how to work from home, how to make money, you know, on their own time, how to be, you know, live the lifestyle they want to live. Another thing, collaborate with other YouTube creators. I recommend this because it increases your exposure. And if you can, I know it's hard, and I, you know, I have trouble doing it too. <laughs> but reply back to as many comments as possible. And you do this because that actually shows you're engaging with your reader or your viewers. The The hardest part with some viewers is they don't feel like they are actually being heard. So if you can review back to them, if you can reply back to them, they will see that you're you know, a real person, you're reading all their comments, and chances are they'll be more willing to comment in the future. And link your YouTube channel with your social media platforms. You know, that builds a following. So, you know, link to Twitter, link to Instagram, link to Facebook, and, you know, link back. That's what you need to do. And ask people to subscribe. This will build a loyal following. It will increase your subscriber count. Chances are, when you post a new video, more people will see it. Next, niche websites. <coughs> Niche websites are a great way to you know build a little bit of a following. Um, I, I created a website you know years ago on on toothbrushes, on you know how to brush your tooth or teeth correctly, you know what tooth, toothbrushes are the best, you know which toothpaste you should use, and it's making good money. Okay, I choose a, a niche that was not extremely competitive at the time. It is more competitive now, but I chose a non-competitive niche because I knew I could get my keywords ranked much quicker. And you need to create quality content to attract links. In the beginning, I thought I could just create you know a bunch of 200-word articles, but that wasn't the case. It took about uh, took about 30 articles of 600 words to really get my site going. Now, I recommend you start with at least 20 quality articles of 800 words, and you target four keywords for each article. By doing that, you will be you will be targeting at least 80 keywords. And choose your keywords carefully. Choose keywords that you know you can rank for that are not heavily targeted that don't have, you know, really popular sites in the first, you know, 10 listings on Google. I recommend you use Longtail Pro, but you can use any keyword software out there. Another thing, interlink your posts together. It increases your on-page SEO. So link from one post to the next post, that post to the next post. Just keep that going. That will spread the link juice from every every article that you write. And it will create, create better SEO, which is you know, search engine optimization for every single page throughout your site. Lastly, offer an affiliate product or quality courses. Let's say you have a niche website on certain recipes. You can create, you can use affiliate products on Amazon. You can, you can promote, you know, a new, you know, cooking dish or, you know, some spatula set. And you can also promote a course on teaching you how to cook correctly. Those are great ways to actually get some money coming in, you know, while you're still building up your site. Another thing, Udemy courses. This is a site where you can actually create a course on pretty much anything and sell it to people that want to know about that topic. So, you create a course based on something that you know well. Like I said earlier, I don't know how to cure cancer. I would not create a course on that. I would, however, create a course on how to invest in real estate with no money down because that's something I know well. 
Also, price that course competitively with other courses. If the other courses are priced at, you know, $20 or, you know, $50, price it fairly competitive with them. Don't price yours at $999 if you think it's never going to sell. If it's not worth that, don't price it that. Also, ask your friends and family to take your course to gather their constructive criticism. This is something that I learned fairly early on. If you don't ask for criticism, nobody's going to give it to you. Just because you, you know, put a price on it and it starts selling doesn't mean it's a quality course. You could change things here and there, make the course much better, offer it for the same price, and you will get more sales. You'll get better reviews. Just keep that in mind. Also, promote your course on social media and on your website. You know, why not promote it? It's up there. It's a quality course. Promote it. People need to see it. And create additional courses to cater to your audience. Let's say I created that course on how to invest in real estate with no money down. Maybe the next thing I would do is how to, you know, flip your real estate. You know, what are the correct re renovations to make on your, your real estate purchase? And lastly, offer the course on multiple platforms. One of the other platforms I like to use is Gumroad. It's called Gumroad.com. There are many other platforms out there, but those are the two that I like. Next is affiliate marketing. I love affiliate marketing. This is something I do all the time. I do it on YouTube, do it on my websites, do it on social media. This is a great way to increase your income. You do not have to take your own product. You're promoting somebody else's product, but you're getting a commission. So promote affiliate links through social media. I love to do this because you can get a large following on social media fairly quickly. And choose high quality offers, the offers that you've actually tried. So I would not promote something if I've never tried the, the offer. And I recommend that because you don't want to promote something to your audience that you have never tried and you can't you know, fully stand behind. And create a website for repeat sales. This is something I love to do. I love to take niche websites and put affiliate products on them. I do this because I don't have time to always create the new course or the new product, so I use somebody else's course or product and I'll make a small commission off that. One tip is to look for residual offers. Residual means you get something month after month. Somebody signs up, they pay for it one time, they pay their you know, monthly fee and you get commission every single month. Residual incomes will add up very quickly. Also, educate often and promote on rare occasions. This just builds trust. And use affiliate marketing as a stepping stone to create your own offers. And for number 10, run Facebook pages. This is something that I've been doing a lot lately because Facebook is a huge platform. There's a lot of people on Facebook every single day. More people will check their Facebook pages than the time they'll actually watch TV in a, any given day. Just know that you can run Facebook pages and make a good amount of money from it. What I like to do is create popular Facebook pages and promote products. So what I do is actually promote um, or create popular Facebook pages based on my niche websites and on that particular niche. I recommend doing this because I can also drive traffic to my websites. I can promote products and build you know, a brand and a following. And just by gaining a following through advertising and promoting on other pages, you can increase the people that like your page and see your stuff daily. This is what I recommend. Choose a niche which has high price affiliate offers or courses. So if you run a Facebook page and there's only a thousand people that you know follow you, you don't want to promote something that's two dollars and ninety nine cents. You will make very little money. Let's say you're promoting a page or running a page on stock trading. You can offer products, you can offer courses that are sometimes you know four hundred ninety nine dollars, nine hundred ninety nine dollars. It doesn't take very many people to to buy that course before you start making a good income. Just know you should test every single product that you promote, just like we talked about in the affiliate marketing page. Another thing is you can cross promote for more exposure. So what I recommend, you know, I have a bunch of recipe pages. I take those pages, I will cross promote them, you know, inside you know my small little network, and I will also try to reach out to another person, another Facebook page, and try to cross promote with them as well. They promote my page, I promote theirs, and we both increase our following. Just know to never stop learning means you'll never stop earning. That is the motto that I go by. So keep learning as much and as much as you possibly can and you will see that it doesn't take much before you can start making a full-time income 
through part-time hours. So that is my slideshow of the top 10 home-based businesses you can do online. If you guys have any questions, please comment below, or you can send me a message over on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash homemade entrepreneur, and I'll answer any questions that you guys have. Talk to you guys soon.